Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna welcome everybody back. It is just about one p.m. Hope everybody uh, was was able to get into a poster session and uh, have some conversation. We it took me a while to figure it out, but we finally got there. Um, had a good conversation, uh, and then I hope everybody is hydrated, caffeinated, and nourished as we head into the afternoon. Um, and we, I guess just, just to start out, if, um, folks want to drop some thoughts in the chat box about, um, anything that, that was surprising or new or interesting from this morning's sessions, um, feel free to do that, get the conversation going a little bit in the chat box. Um, we are, Elizabeth has been, uh, putting the results of the first breakout session into the second breakout sessions document during the lunch break, uh, air quote break. Um, and uh, so as you go into your, your second breakout session, you'll have a document that's basically been tailored for, for, your, for your group's discussion based on the collective feedback from the, the morning's conversations. Um, Elizabeth, do you want me to bring up the um, the presentation with the uh, sure I'm just finishing up the last one so if you want to start that and just introduce what they're going to be talking about in the next breakout session oh. that would be helpful okay give me one second folks sorry there were so many more comments and um, examples than I realized there would be and Apparently, I needed more than an hour to do this, so I, I appreciate the amount of feedback, the obviously discussion that went on in the breakout groups, and I'm just finishing up the last one, so I'll be ready in just a second. Okay, I have it. Now I will share it. So we talked about, um, Leah, can you just give me a thumbs up if you can see the screen? Yep, great, thank you. Um, so we talked about the, the sort of framework for the conversation um, today and over the annual meeting, and hopefully as we go forward into the, the next year, being really these four parts. <clears throat> and we, um, we talked about, and uh, Leah helped guide us through the um, the state regulate regulator uh, regulator observations of top issues um, this morning. The first breakout session was uh, having the group talk about our own examples, the ex examples among the group, and um, asking clarifying questions and unpacking some of the specific issues um, and talking about specific needs. This next breakout session that we're heading into um, is really trying to think about what barriers are represented in those needs or what barriers are there to addressing the needs. So we've identified, for example, that there are uh, challenges with hand washing. Um, and um, some of the some of the issues as identified and described actually point to the barriers, you know, starting with is, is a hand washing station even available where where it's expected. Um, but what are the other other challenges? Why aren't those hand washing stations available where they're needed? Um, so really starting to unpack specific issues and think about specific barriers, um, and and then thinking about what specific actions would help reduce those barriers. And the one framework we've provided for thinking about this in the the Google Docs is to think about. Is this a fundamental lack of knowledge among our entire universe, right? So, is this a re is there a research question here that we need to really uh, dig into to develop the knowledge that's needed to address the issue? Do we think that the knowledge exists, but just hasn't really found its way into the rest of the world? So, would a literature review or a systematic review of the topic um, help uh, help uh, reduce the um, reduce the barriers? Um, or would, do we need to rethink the way we're approaching education on this issue, right? So Leah mentioned earlier this morning, can we, can we maybe think about this as a vo vocational education uh, approach for, for some, of the, some of the challenges we're seeing here? Um, 
And, and then the, the third piece is, does the knowledge exist, do resor good resources exist, and do good delivery methods exist, but we just haven't found it? And that may be the case. Uh, there has been a ton of work done on a variety of FSLP projects and CPS projects and lots of other funded projects that maybe just haven't found their way to the folks that need it. So that's the, the point of this next breakout session. Elizabeth, do you want to add anything to that? No, I think that's right. And that's really the next step in the root cause analysis is that we've identified the problem. We've started to give some context to that. And now, Chris, this leans a bit on that needs assessment slide you shared at the very beginning, getting further into those actual barriers that are preventing adoption. So if we take an example, let's say um, worker training that there, we've identified that this is an issue that there, that we are missing worker training, that the examples that people are seeing is that um, there's not the uh, material available in the language that's needed, or maybe it's not reaching the right family members. And then if you start to say, well, what are the barriers to the reason why those things are not happening, that maybe Maybe there's um, a financial component to it, that there's not time for the, for the growers to actually provide the training. Maybe the, uh, you know, the resource is not available, it needs to be created. Getting at those actual um, fundamental factors that are preventing the adoption uh, and, and then starting to identify how can we address that. If it's because a resource needs to be developed, and it's based on research, what, are, what does that look like? Does that mean that we need to do original research? Does that mean that we need to do a literature review because the research exists? Does that mean that a resource exists covering the topics that we need, but we need to translate it into the languages that are needed? Those are the kinds of things, digging a little bit deeper, getting into, those, into the roots of actual cause for um, not getting to implementation. And so that's what we're talking about with barriers. And, these are the types of things that, as Chris is showing on the slide, that in, in reviews of needs assessments have been things that have been identified across our region. And so identifying what those barriers are within the particular category that your breakout group is gonna be discussing. Does that help, Chris? Does that provide context? Yep. It does for me. Anybody okay. have questions or additions before we... I guess we're hopping into... Yeah, breakout. so before we jump in, I guess what I will do is just introduce what you guys will be doing. And so in the next, again, we have 10 breakout groups, but this time they are by a specific topic. Um, and this is where you opted in to a topic. So if you were interested in hand washing and you told me you were interested in hand washing, then you're going into a hand washing breakout group. And what we've done during the the lunch break was I took all of the individual comments that were discussed in the first breakout section and I compiled them all into the Google Doc that your facilitator will share with you. So you can see you may have been in a discussion that talked about hand washing, but you may not have been. And so I've now copied and pasted all of those edits and comments, those examples into the into the document so that when the facilitator shares that link with you, you can take a look at it. And I think the first thing will be probably to read through those examples and those challenge, uh, needs that were identified in the earlier breakout to familiarize yourself with what that those earlier breakouts talked about. And, and I guess maybe have some more of that initial conversation again, ask clarifying questions if you need to familiarize yourself a bit with um, what some of those examples are. And then Again, um, just really start to, again, we have these uh, questions in the, in the document to help drive the conversation um, with examples listed, but um, take the time to go through those individual pieces. Now, this afternoon is a much longer breakout. This is a two hour breakout because this is where the, the meat of it is, where we really wanna be able to articulate next steps and how we can, as I mentioned earlier, um, create tailored approaches to dealing with these issues. And so understanding the underlying barrier that's impacting the prevention or uh, the adoption of an improved practice is, is the only way that we're going to be able to then articulate what we need to do to address those
barriers. And one of the things that we recognize is that it might not be regional, that there may be individual barriers in pockets in the region that are not impacting other pockets of the region. And so drawing on some of that local specificity would be helpful just to better understand like, oh, okay, this is something we're seeing in the Maryland, Delaware area, but the folks in Maine and New Hampshire are not seeing that type of issue because of climate differences or market uh, differences or other factors that might be influencing growers differently depending on where they're located. So all of the, I'm, I'm just sort of talking about some of these things to spark thoughts as we head into this breakout. Um, again, I wanna uh, make sure to encourage people to volunteer to be note takers because our facilitators will be driving the conversation. And then also just to help take, um, keep track of time. It is a longer breakout, so you should have plenty of time to get through everything. But if you've found that an hour has passed and you're still on the first question, maybe um, make note of that and, and move on. The other thing is that since this is a longer a breakout session, please feel free to take a break as you need it. So that's up to you guys as a group. We don't have a break time built into the agenda. So if you feel like after 45 minutes, people need to get up and take a you know, take a little bit of a break and get some water, by all means, please work that into your discussion. So um, Chris and I will be sitting in the main room and so can help to move people if need be. But also um, if you have any questions as the group is discussing, please feel free to grab one of us and we'll pop into a breakout to help. So um, I needed to also talk a little bit so that Perform Media would have time to move everybody into their appropriate breakout rooms. And so I'm wondering if that, if we've had enough time to do that. And if so, then we are good to move into our breakouts now. Great, well, welcome everybody. It looks like all of the, are all the breakout rooms back? We have 86 people back. It looks like it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, thank you so much. I just wanted to, you're all back in the main room and um, that that's the end of our session for today. But now I just wanted to say that we have time to go over into the networking. If you want to take time to do that and visit with people, um, you can go to the networking tab on the conference site and then just jump into a room with others who are in the networking space. And then tomorrow um, we reconvene again. We'll have that networking time in the morning, morning coffee um, for an hour. And then the general session will be at, starting at 9.30 in that webcast where we were this morning. Um, and we'll be hearing updates on research and from the Produce Safety Network for the Northeast region. So um, I appreciate your time today, and I know that we've had some really productive conversations and looking forward to continuing the conversation tomorrow. And so for there, I just want to say thank you and um, hope you'll join us in the networking rooms. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much.